Hi, I just wanted to tell you about how we can use a whiteboard really effectively with adults who have speech and language difficulties. And in today's episode, I'll be showing you a session, just a clip of a session of me working with an adult who has unclear speech. Um, he tends to mumble a bit, um, but what I'm focusing on is what he's interested in and his that topic of interest is what we then start talking about and identifying the sounds and the words that he needs to focus on. So let's get to it. Okay, right. So um, we've seen the video now of the five tips for a website. Okay. And I'm just going to do the five areas there, like that. Okay, and I'm going to give you my uh, keyboard, you know, so you can type in here. So number one, first tip was, do you want to type that in for me? Uh, oh, do you want me to type in the words right into it? Yep. Uh, well, the word, the tip was just keep it simple, wasn't it? Yeah, keep it. I was yeah, use some um, simple fonts. It's but simple, but simple and got like, three main fonts. Okay, All right. We're, yeah, we're not gonna we're not gonna talk about each tip. So, for example, wait a minute. I just wanna write how red. Oh, okay. Go on. Yeah, go on. Oh, Vertica and love ones. Cambria, maybe? Right. Yeah, it's like 16 font size. Okay. That's what 16 font, but. Yeah, gone, yep. Yeah. And then limit text, so I'll just put it over. Okay. Right. Have I got print. all those? I think I. Um... Like I've got here font. something about three three yeah, font three types. Font. It was three font types: Helvetica and um, other ones. I can't remember. Ceres, Ceres, something. Sarah, yeah. Sarah, Sarah. Was it? yeah. It'll be Serif, Helvetica, and what that one be? One kind of environment. And there were some that he said not to use. Can you remember those? Uh, time to environment and uh, some difficult ones. Right. Aerial, wasn't it? Aerial, right. Yeah, okay. So, right, so you can see in the situation where he's actually a website designer, a computer student, you know, so he deals with all this sort of stuff all the time, a lot more than I do. And yet he's having difficulty remembering um, information from the video. Um, as well as being able to organize his work on the screen. So what we're working on is mind mapping, knowing how to put the salient points in a presentation and under what category it is and what the subcategories are. And he's not quite got the idea of how to do mind mapping. So later on, I'll go and show him. Let's have a look. So that was about keeping it simple. Yeah. Sorry, my pen's not working very well. There you go. So keeping it simple, and you got those. Okay, now I'm going to go and do the next one. And the next one, uh, we've got. I've got here navigation. All right. Yeah, so and so I'm just gonna. I've got one, two, three branches off that. So I'll give you the keyboard, and you can write on those three branches. Um, I think I want to use feedback. Oh, one was like um, seamless. Mm -hmm. Seamless aggravation, I can't remember the other one, really right. We managed to get two from that. 
Can you get the other one? Um, I got here three click rule. Oh, I didn't, didn't hear, I must have missed it. Okay, let me write it down then. Three click rule. Okay, right, so that was all about, that's all about the navigation. Right, okay, the next one. Uh, we've got here color palette, so I'm just going to write in here color palette. And I've got one, two, three, four, five branches. One, two, three, four. Five. Okay, I'll give you the keyboard. So now you're going to see him put all the words in and I'm going to fast forward the session so that you can see the whole mind map and work out how it was put together. So you can see how important colours are. Um, with this particular whiteboard some of the colours go over the other colours but as long as you've got the keywords in there then it will help them to structure their presentation. Colours are very important because then you can refer to them like, you know, look at the red section or look at the pink section, let's start off at the green section or whatever it is, you can use colours to help them uh, um, navigate around the different mind map structure. Now you can see that what I'm doing is underlining the sounds and I'm getting him to underline the sounds that he's working on which is particularly the affricates the j and the ch and also the um, the f and the v that he's working on there as well because he doesn't tend to move his mouth very much there right so let's now uh, I'm going to go again and this time I'm going to do the introduction which is this bit here where the yellow circle is so that's where I'm going to introduce it and then I'm going to go and do number one and number two all right today we're going to talk about website design and the first thing you need to do we've got five tips and the first thing you need to do is to keep your font simple the font size should be 16 you shouldn't have too much text on the website so that your user isn't overwhelmed with text and have a minimum of three font styles such as Helvetica or Serif. Serif. Don't use ones like Arial or Times Roman. The second tip is navigation. Make sure that the navigation is seamless and Try and get some feedback from your friends and family so that you can check whether the website has got good usability. There is a three click rule, which means if your customers can navigate around it in three clicks and find what they want, then it's a good website. That's right, so your turn. So you can see now that I have given a model of what I expect and how to use the mind map to structure your presentation. And I've given two sort of paragraphs, if you like, if I was to write it down, it would have been two paragraphs. But now I've just given a verbal explanation of the two areas or the two tips in this situation. So now it's up to him to use that model to then do his own presentation. Uh, today we're going to talk about navigation. Uh, it's important to keep your website seamless so it's, in so it's easy to interact with. Um, should um, apply a free click rule so we have to navigate the website in three clicks so you can get to what you want to get to quickly. Uh, you should also use feedback from other people to um, better your websites, open to feedback. Sorry. Right, okay, so 
what I'm sharing with you now, which is your homework, is this document, okay? Okay. So I've left it like this. And what I want you to do is practice doing all of this presentation verbally. You can do it on your phone. I'm sure you've got a recorder thing on your phone. And then I want you to email it to me. Okay. Okay, so just record. I'm not asking you to write anything, just talking, short sentences, using the keywords, taking breaths in between the sentences. Okay, really sh clear as well. I'm, are you getting there? You're getting a lot better now. So there you have it. You've got the step by step guide on how to use your whiteboard with adults who have got unclear speech communication difficulties, language issues. And I want to take you through those five steps. You've got sharing the video to start off with and then taking down notes in a mind map so that um, you can get the keywords for that. And then modeling that those keywords and putting them into sentences for them so they can see how you've structured the language and then giving them a turn to do it and giving them feedback and a homework. So those are the five things that you should do. So if you want any more ideas on how to incorporate brainstorming, mind maps and using a whiteboard effectively with your clients, then head over to teletherapyinaction.com forward slash podcast. Um, and you will find it in episode 18. Okay, so that's teletherapyinaction.com forward slash podcast. And that will be episode 18. So I see you in there. Take care. Bye.